Hi there, my name is Sam, and we are here today giving the uh, Cap Manor a little makeover. This is the Cap household that we've already played so far in the Veronaville rotations. Um, I here I kind of started out. I, I didn't. I did kind of skip a lot of it, but I um, was working on the terrain. The terrain is very strange in this lot, and I'm noticing it in a lot of the Veronaville lots, at least on the Cap side. I think it's supposed to be like very hilly um, on purpose so I did try to keep some of that but also kind of even it out a little to just be a little bit more manageable for decorating um, and also just to have more of a lawn I know when we were playing we kind of found that um, there was some routing issues with some of the NPCs they would end up out in the road because they couldn't like seem to route their way up the uh, walkway which was strange but so hopefully it'll be a little bit better this time. I uh, looked up a bunch of inspiration uh, pictures and stuff like I like to do with certain builds. And uh, I think a lot of the cap side of Veronaville is styled in a, a um, what is it it's called? Like an English Tudor or something of that nature. Uh, what is the, I think I have, yeah, like it's called Tudor style. I have my Pinterest up here up here and so I used a bunch of pictures of actual Tudor style houses and um, a lot of them used a, like a very um, baseline of stone I would say and so that's what I kind of started out with here you'll see in a second I kind of I'm trying to feel this out mostly I tend to be somebody that has to like put it down in front of me to see how it looks before I change my mind or decide whether I like it. Um, I don't love when a um, either a floor like a tile design or a ground like a terrain cover uh, repeats too much which is what kind of the issue with this small stone that I had originally put down was. So that's why I'm trying to find like a bigger bigger stone that uh, looks a little bit better in a more of a such a large field of coverage there if that makes sense. Um, but I, I ended up liking this, uh, this sort of stone tiling and it comes with a whole set of these um, edging details that you can kind of play around with. So I start to sort of mess around with those and play with the colors and just kind of try to make it more, uh, more fancy. Looks like, cause I, I, the cap seem like they're from old money, you know, and so they, probably would have a little bit more put together fancy type uh, home. Uh, I figured a lot of the the land that they're on, this building and everything was probably actually put together by ancestors that they're just continuing to live on. And so like when I was doing the landscaping, I tried to do stuff that looked like maybe it had been there a while and was slightly overgrown. Not that they necessarily aren't taking care of it, but maybe just that things are have been there a while. If that makes sense but I did all kinds of fooling around with this stupid uh, entryway area here which the original I this one thing I tried to do is sort of stay to the style of the original house a little bit which of course had this like strange large like covered uh, yard not even like I guess a courtyard or something you could call it and so I tried to come up with a way to use it. I was playing around with the foundation and everything. Um, but I think I, I ended up not doing a whole lot. It ended up just being too much, so I cut it back. And the thing, of course, is is um, in my reference photos of Tudor houses, most of them seem to not really have a large foundation like this. They seem to be right on the ground, almost like what, what in America we would call a ranch-style house, where it's like right on the ground. There's not really a, a foundation holding it up off the ground. Um, but and then I, of course, I've gone in here with some um, this nice. I think this is must be converted from The Sims 4, or I don't think it's from The Sims 3. But it's a um, like a nice stone wall. I think that seems appropriate, and I kind of left like parts of it disconnected 
So it looked like, again, it had been there a while. It was sort of falling apart and broken down. On some farmland areas around where I live, there's a lot of old stone and stuff. Um, and then I had this idea that some of the places that were sort of raised up, raised up rather, um, would have sort of some kind of stone foundation underneath the fence. And I actually exited out while doing this and um, went searching for some custom terrain paints because there's not a whole lot available for stone for The Sims 2. I ended up finding some really cool ones that were actually converted from The Sims 3 and that's what I'm kind of playing around with here. Um, I think I ended up choosing just like a basic pebble one because it was really the only one that seemed subtle enough and it looks better once I start um, adding dirt and other sort of affected grass and everything to make it look a little worn out. It looks a little silly just kind of on its own. But I kind of liked how it looked like it sort of is a, I don't know, like a retaining wall or something. Like they keep it from the ground from sort of eroding away underneath the, uh, the stone wall, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, I continue to kind of, I put another uh, roll of it up, up up front, sort of like that was a, maybe an artificial, artificially raised up bit of land or something. They kind of did it on purpose to make it more fancy or something. Um, and then I end up putting some of the stone kind of underneath the rest of the, of the wall. Again, like a little foundation to it. Um, yeah, it was kind of interesting trying to look at the Tudor houses and stuff. Of course, as a American, I don't have a lot of first-hand knowledge of these sorts of European builds, so I tried my best, but uh, it, of course, I took a lot of creative liberties, such as these arches here I attempted to use. I did not end up using them because they really did not match Tudor style, but I ended up leaving them on the, the foundation there. I tend to like if I find an interesting piece that I think I want to put in somewhere, I'll put it somewhere that I think I'll use it later, And but I didn't end up using it. Um, so this is adding in that terrain and it really, I think it really does help. Again, just kind of make things look a little bit old, but not, I didn't want them to look like they were uh, not taken care of because I think um, consort would be on top of taking care of things, but there's just a certain point where things kind of age. Um, so that's kind of just filling in all that. I, I tried to keep the, I ended up keeping the house mainly the same sort of structure at least on the outside. Um, I did add a few things and edit some things, but the, it does seem to be uh, pretty in line with what I was seeing for Tudor houses. I mean, there wasn't any definite, like the same layout for every house, but it seemed to fit all right. Um, I did end up adding, there's that piece that sort of sticks out of the front of the house that has no uh, base to it. And there actually are a lot of Tudor houses that have that sort of overhang. I think in the United States, you see it's this piece right here that's um, above this foundation and I'm actually filling it in um, because I found a reference of a Tudor house that has almost this like castle-like piece up the front of it. Um, maybe I'll put a picture in. And um, But I was thinking that I, I need to look up like, I know there's a lot of people that do medieval themed building and stuff. I, I think there there must be some sort of like castle wall type custom fence that I could get to really make this more realistic. I ended up using some kind of silly uh, stone fence, but I'd like to get like a more believable castle wall thing. Um, but anyway, they, there, there was a lot of that sort of overhang pieces that I had seen in uh, manor, or not manor builds, Tudor builds. So I did end up doing that in a couple instances, um, but like in, in the United States, you would see them in like a split level house or a lot of houses that uh, I would think, I don't know what era, if they're more sort of like 70s era houses or something, but um, it, it's common to 
have like a section, an upper level sort of overhang beyond the foundation of the level below it, if that makes sense, because I guess it, I think the idea is that it saves money to not have to build the foundation that much bigger. And that's kind of the idea. So I don't know if these old homes in Europe that have that sort of style too, or did have that same thinking behind them or not. But anyway, I did do that a lot in this house because of um, what I was seeing in the reference photos. So I do start kind of here. I'm just playing around with the roofing. Um, and this is one of the first little overhangs I make, I think, if I remember correctly. I might be misremembering. No, I don't think. No, this isn't an overhang. <laughs> Never mind. Don't listen to me. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, listen to me. <laughs> I actually ended up making two entrances to the house, too. I ended up fooling around a lot with the with the foundation for some reason. It's, it's like weird to try to find the right sort of fit for it sometimes. Um, this walling that I'm using, I wanted to mention, is not the original um, Sims 2 walling like the Veroneville uses. It's actually an, a fixed up version of, the sa of that walling by, um, I believe it's by Peppermint and Ginger. Um, they kind of updated the textures on it essentially and it looks quite nice it's not quite as um i don't know how to explain it. i think the wood on the original one is is like kind of um dramatic like the lighting on it's a little more dramatic or the shading um this one's a little bit almost more gentle looking but i kind of like it. it i find that it actually matched really well i was making over another veronaville house and it matched really well with some of um honeywell's like how windows and doors and stuff the the wood beams did so but yeah this is so I've kind of raised the the castle piece up a little bit and that that fencing that I ended up choosing there does I mean it works okay but I'd like to find a better one but I actually really like this this walling um, I ended up Here's another little overhang. And then the back was what kept bothering me because it's just a big flat straight piece. So I decided to do some overhanging on the on the back here. And it just adds a little bit more like definition, I guess. Um, I like it a little bit better. <laughs> this... This is, I've played this mix, this music mix in the background before on a build videos. It's a bunch of Sims 1 music, if you're curious. I love this song. This gives me, it gives me Sims Online flashbacks. Um, so I decided to make like these little planters along the side here and I'm trying to find some kind of plant that would go in there. The key thing was trying to find a plant that wouldn't need to be trimmed and that if like I hired a gardener they wouldn't keep like having a fit that they couldn't reach it kind of thing. I think I ended up keeping this. This is actually just like a house plant type plant and I ended up just kind of giving it a, a edging to it to make it look nice. Oh, and then I, I changed my mind and um, decided to do like some kind of iron fence. Uh, I think I had seen some reference that had something like that. One thing about the, the houses that I was finding was they had very um, kind of, I, I don't know, sort of organic pathways, like just very like rounded and not very straight. They weren't like perfectly paved, organized path roads or driveways, I guess. They were kind of all um very naturally curved and everything and so that's kind of why i had originally had done that kind of front walkway like i did i forgot to mention that at the beginning but um so these are some cool custom uh windows that i've had for a while and they're kind of neat i think i must have found them on mod the sims and they ended up working out pretty well for this build I don't know what we're going to end up putting inside that column. We'll have to put like a little reading nook on one of the levels or something. That would be cute. 
It was hard to kind of decide on a door. I ended up choosing this door, which I think is a game. Is it from one of the stuff packs? But it, I did download a ton of recolors of it because it has kind of a nice shape to it. So I like to use it. But I think it's one of those ones that originally comes in like all kinds of ugly, like pale green and plum and all those weird colors. But yeah. Oh yeah, I really like these um, tall, like, like I don't know, they're almost like a cypress or something. But, and then these bushes, these are some of my favorite custom bushes. They just, I just trying, was trying to sort of fill space with this kind of natural greenery. Just going to town with it. I eventually end up um, adding some nice vines climbing up the side and I really love that look especially on like an old stone house like this so but yeah we've got a nice green ran I don't think these bushes have to be trimmed either I'm pretty sure I might be wrong but I was trying I wanted to do like some fountains or some water I was gonna do like little because originally there was the like little ponds on either side of the walkway. Um, and I wanted to sort of recreate that in some way with like a pool, but um, I didn't end up actually doing that. I ended up choosing like a stone fountain from the decor section. Um, I really like this statue. I have a ton of custom statues that, um, I believe this is actually, this might be converted from The Sims 3 Medieval, maybe. Um, but uh, I really like, having lots of statue options because I like making like fancy places with lots of good statues available and then lots of uh, this was one of the times where I was trying to make some things look a little overgrown and stuff with the um, grass I really like these these are like delphiniums or something I'm not sure what these flowers are supposed to be Yeah, this is like a four to two conversion grass. I ended up really liking it, so I kind of threw it like everywhere. <laughs> Figured it sort of pulled together a theme, having it kind of around and not just in one little place. And then also some wildflowers I threw around. I thought that would be kind of fun to let some wildflowers grow. Um, I kind of left the yard mostly natural. I ended up putting back some trees. Yeah, these trees here were the original kind that were there. So, um, yeah, I think I was playing around with some different fountains here. I really like a good fountain. But yeah, I end up choosing these ones here. I think they're pretty fancy looking. They look like they've been there a while. And they kind of are on either side like the other one was. But yeah, this is just about it for this one. Um, I don't remember if I uh, mentioned it or not. And here I am doing some of the um, ivy, I guess, crawling up the side. And I think it looks really cool. I really love a good, good ivy climb. <laughs> um, but this, uh, this video is just the exterior. I probably have put that in the uh, description somewhere or the title somewhere. But this is just the um, exterior and then I will do another next video will be the interior just doing like stripping the whole house down and redoing it felt like way too much for like one video like this one's like you know 20 minutes long I'm sure ex the interior would be even longer so I thought it'd be more comfortable to split it up and at the point of recording this I have actually not even started the interior so it's it's a surprise for me too how it's gonna turn out <laughs> Thank you.
So I'm just adding a couple more pieces and that'll be that. And I think it'll be really fun. I'm hoping one thing I'd really like to do is have um, one of the Cap kids still live in this house, even after um, I almost called him Mortimer uh, Consort. <laughs> has gone. <laughs> um, I think that that would be really nice to have it like continue to be in the family and all of that. But that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Thank you much, very much for watching. <laughs>